So in this video, I want to talk about how to uh, rewrite a model in Simulink uh, in your Python. Uh, so in reinforcement learning, uh, usually we need an environment. And this environment model uh, is very easy to be set up in the Simulink. Uh, however, um, you know, to set up the uh, communication between Simulink and Python, it, it does re require a lot of effort. Um, so that's why, uh, you know, uh, there are two different uh, choice. Um, one, you can simulate your environment in Simulink and then call those in Python. Uh, well, that's uh, something that you can do. Uh, you know, uh, we at this moment do not have uh, enough confidence uh, on how it performs. So that's the main reason that we didn't choose this first uh, approach. And um, we chose this second approach is uh, essentially uh, use the Simulink as a, as a reference and uh, reprogram the environment model in Python. Uh, the second choice is, a, uh, in my opinion, better than the first one, especially when uh, your model is simple. Um, so in, in my case, my uh, my model itself is pretty simple. It's just the uh, you know the PI controller uh, and a bunch of um, you know simple math um, and the integrators. Uh, so uh, that's why I chose the second approach. Um, and uh, in today's video, just as a demonstration purpose, uh, we want to rewrite uh, essentially this. Uh, this model um, in Python. Uh, so what I did is that uh, uh, in order to test um, this model itself in uh, Python, which is an integrator, uh, I, cl I collect the data from my Simulink model as a reference. That's why uh, I was saying that we can use the simu simulation in Simulink as a reference and uh, uh, reprogram the environment model in Python. So. Uh, for that, we can uh, essentially uh, play the play the simulation. In my case, uh, the input to this block is a vehicle speed, and uh, uh, the output is uh, uh, rolling distance. Because my project is a hill hold project, and and then. Uh, by integrating the vehicle speed, I can compute the rolling distance of the vehicle. Um, and to interface with Python, uh, I I make I made it a fixed step uh, solver because right now I haven't figured out how to use a variable step solver in Python. Um, and uh, the time step um, is one hundred uh, microsecond. Uh, in this case, it's uh, also important that we log the format uh, by uh, save the format as array. Uh, you can choose to save, save it to time series, but you may need to, uh, you know, write a little bit different function um, in Python to, to to deal with the data. So let's set this to array, and uh, we already run the uh, simulation. Uh, we can actually see that in terms of this data. Uh, we have a vehicle speed, and it got integrated into, uh, you know, the, the the rolling distance. And uh, after running this simulation, as expected, uh, we're gonna uh, get a data data file, um, essentially saved as logged data dot might, and. Uh, uh, I just uh, because I saved it as an array, I just renamed I renamed it as a log data array dot might. And then after this, um, you know, uh, I essentially wrote up this script where, um, you know, uh, the file name is pointed to this log array dot might, and and then the variable names. Um, time, vehicle speed, and rolling distance. Um, so it's kind of important to match the name. Um, I mean, it's not necessary to match the name here, but uh, uh, essentially there's a 
uh, implicit assumption. Uh, if you if you load this uh, data that we uh, let's load this load data array, um, and then you you actually got this data from my lab. For simply for cl clarity, let me actually clear all of them. And uh, if I load array here, I will get a data from my lab uh, which contains three variables. Um, and uh, the reason it is three because there is an implicit assumption that the first one is actually the time access. Um, that's because we have a stop time 50 and then our fixed time step solver is uh, 100 microsecond. Uh, you can verify that by opening the model configuration parameters and, and then I already set the um, solver to fix step and uh, the step size 100 microsecond. Uh, then you can see that our time is increasing every 100 time step. And then the second variable is actually uh, corres it cor it's corre uh, corresponds to vehicle speed. And then the third one is your um, loading distance here. So in my code, uh, you know, I gave it, uh, uh, I know it's three variables, so I gave it uh, time, vehicle speed, loading distance. And then there is a function import data from my, uh, my lab array is in a separate file. I wrote this, um, this function and unit tested it. Um, essentially, it, it is rely on the uh, H5Pi uh, and, and then it, it reads in that uh, data array and then um, because the file name that we that we set here is data from my lab so um, that's why you see this data from my lab and then um, I just extract all the uh, array and package them into a, a pandas data frame uh, which use the name specified here um, that's just to uh, make it a little bit flexible. Uh, if you if you are collecting additional um, data here, uh, you just need to match the the name um, in in variable names. And uh, um, it is a little bit more clear if if we uh, read the you know the. Um, the code in uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, essentially, we read this as a raw data, and uh, uh, this can uh, this this can help us extract the uh, whole array. And then uh, we could see that uh, after packaging the uh, packaging it into a pandas data frame, we got this. Panda data frame that has a time access, vehicle speed, rolling distance, um, and then um, for visualization purpose, I just uh, uh, used matplotlib, um, matplotlib, um, and then plotted the vehicle speed versus the rolling distance. So this is a kind of a unit test data created from my lab, and, and we load it in. Uh, into the Python using, uh, you know, H5Pi. That's the the one that handles, uh, you know, the the, the new newer version, uh, my lab files. Uh, because initially, initially I was using something else, um, you know, from Sci Sci uh, um and and then it was complaining about uh, it cannot handle that. So we we have to use that one. Um, and then uh, we could test this actually, uh, 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 you know, mm, by running this file. Uh, however, I'll skip that because it's pretty straightforward that we uh, loaded uh, the file into a data frame and then we plot it. Um, and then the um, in 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 this uh, unit test file uh, built on top of that, I created this uh, simulation class where uh, essentially um, what it does is it, it, 
it um, allow you to set a, a end time and it's same, same to the MyLab we set to 50 uh, seconds and, and then we have a fixed step solver which uh, have 100 microsecond and then my model in this case is an uh, integrator um, and this integrator I wrote in a, in a separate file um, integrator.py and then that integrator uh, just uh, uh, implement this very simple uh, you know math that uh, uh, integrate the input um, and using the time step uh, passed from the um, from here when we we'll create this object and and then it keep integrating it provide also provide a reset function if needed uh, but essentially what we we do is we set up a, our plan model this could be more complicated I, I'm just using um, integrator as an example and then after I wrote the integrator here uh, you know um, at the beginning of the simulation we set the time to be zero and the time step to be zero uh, difference between time and time step is time step uh, kind of uh, keep track of the integer steps and and then the time keep track of the actual uh, simulation time um, and then uh, whenever uh, you know our our time simulation time is larger than the uh, end time we will stop or we'll stop the simulation um, and in terms of the simulation itself uh, right now you know first we have to get the input uh, into the integrator and here I wrote a function which essentially just uh, get the uh, you know data from from the my lab uh, my, my file uh, if you look at the code here uh, essentially what it does is uh, um, we we globally we uh, already uh, at the beginning of uh, this file we uh, called that function we just wrote um, you know loaded the MATLAB data into a unit test data and then the unit test data uh, vehicle speed gonna be the input into the integrator however uh, every simulation time step we have to extract a single data um, so that's why we pass the uh, the step here uh, the time step uh, to extract the specific uh, input and then the input at time t right uh, we pass it into the into our integrator uh, and then the integrators result can be get from here uh, and then that's essentially the rolling distance uh, and I used uh, the lease to collect my uh, simulation data um, and then uh, I don't need to collect the time uh, but I, I um, you know create another one collect the time uh, and then uh, we, we just update the simulation uh, simulation time and time stack uh, check for the end the, the the end of the simulation uh, and then we can see that uh, this we set up a simulation object we uh, call the cycle method the cycle method essentially what it does is it's just keep running the simulation until we hit the uh, the end time and then uh, I essentially also sort of uh, uh, you know this this is the, the least uh, here I just packaged our uh, simulated result into a panda state frame um, and uh, this is some debugging code we could just delete them um, and then if the realization is true right we can we can essentially uh, plot the result um, and then I just plotted uh, uh, the result from the Python simulation which is stored in uh, you know data unit test all uh, and I also plotted the um, the data from the my lab so if they overlap each other uh, I consider you know uh, we wrote this model this integrator uh, successfully and you could you could actually wrote additional uh, 
you know, instead of visualization, you could uh, uh, just uh, minus the two and uh, make sure that uh, they are very close to zero. Uh, but I didn't do that. Um, so we could we can run this code for uh, demonstration purpose. Let's um, run the unit test integrator dot pi. So we can see that uh, this is the rolling distance, and uh, uh, the blue one is from Python, the um, orange one is from my lab, and they overlap with, with each other. So uh, we confirmed that we successfully implemented the integrator uh, into um, you know uh, Python, and you could follow the same 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 procedure. Um, you know, divide your model into uh, you know different parts uh, and uh, mm, create different class and and then kind of connect them together uh, then you can um, very easily use this framework to sort of uh, uh, rebuild a simple dynamic uh, simulation created in simulink uh, using using the Python that uh, just as a recap uh, here, you know, we uh, simulated the Simulink, and we we use the data from Simulink as a reference as a unit test data, and we we load load those data uh, into the my uh, use those data created by my lab into the Python, uh, and then uh, we use those data to simulate uh, the the model that we um, programmed in Python. Um, and then we got the the result, and we compare that result with uh, uh, against the uh, output result from my lab, and then we verify that uh, we successfully implemented uh, that uh, model in this case uh, the integrator uh, in Python. Uh, 